You are now watching The Lone Blown. Blown! Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to The Lone Blown. I'm The Lone Blown, aka Zach Lesage, and I'm stoked to share this new series with you. This series takes my Player's Cup 2 run. I recorded these games for Pokemon, and I just got permission to share and re-commentate over these videos and kind of give you my side of what happened in these games. So I figured, kind of like how I did my matchup series recently, the goal is really to give you an insight into my thought process when I play Pokemon and how I came to some of the decisions that allowed me to become the Players' Cup 2 champion. Um, not every single game was perfect. I mean, heck, I had to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning to play these games. And I mean, when I say wake up at 7 a.m., we started at 7 a.m., so I was basically up at 5.30 a.m., I'm a pro Pokemon player. I'm not a person who wakes up super early um, unless I'm catching a flight somewhere. And right now, due to the pandemic, we ain't catching no flights, so I'm not used to waking up early at all. Anyways, in this game, I'm playing against Marco P against their ADP deck. So we'll see exactly how the gameplay goes. I mean, we know that I eventually won the tournament, but there are some games that I'm super psyched to show you and kind of like let you know exactly what was going through my mind. If you already hit that subscribe yet, Hit that subscribe, support the channel if you can. We're currently on our road to a thousand, so let's try to get there. Let's jump into these games. So I remember starting this game and being like, yo, I won the coin flip, this is broken, I get to go second. And I mean, this is a matchup where ADP is typically going to go first because getting off a turn one altered creation GX if you go second is quite difficult. And I mean, the nerves started to set in a little bit because like I had to wake up super early for this literally moments before this game um, I actually even just selected the wrong deck luckily for me it was it was just a kind of a warning um, I selected the theme deck because it was a new account or anything like I don't know it's just one of those things where like I don't know where my mind was at I was half asleep thankfully it wasn't a game loss or anything like that I appreciate everyone involved with that but it's one of those things where I was like, okay, cool, kind of jumping into it, nervous, just like really like hyper selecting, thinking about everything that I possibly could do. So starting off here with the Cherish Ball, searching through my deck, you can see one thing that I try to do every single game is try to search through my deck, um, determine which prize cards are missing so I could properly come up with a game plan each game. Um, so I mean, I think here I was planning on just grabbing a Raichu, just because there's less copies of it in the deck. I... I I don't know. I was like unsure on which one to grab between the Pikaram or that, but I was just going to like go ahead, pitch, pitch the hands and see what I can get. I'm trying to get a bolt in here. Um, and I mean, the start's pretty close to being really good. Um, it's just, there's a lot of energies already going. You already see that I lost three energies. And I'm just like, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. The chaotic spell um, probably didn't matter in this matchup. I'm not entirely sure on my opponent's exact list. I don't think they really played too, too much. And here I'm just like, I really need to get off something. Like, I've invested a lot. And if I get a Crushing Hammers, which I got double double tails there, I was like, maybe I could pass, because it kind of nullifies my opponent's turn. But here you just kind of kind of go for it. Um, and this is, this is not the type of game that you want to be seeing when your opponent... When you're in the round one of a Player's Cup, two Globals Finals. Because two losses and you're out of the tournament. So getting three Crushing Hammers tails on your first turn absolutely atrocious i think i discarded like what four energies there so in my mind i'm just like this is pretty atrocious i've lost a bunch of energies not in a really good spot my hand doesn't really have a marnie i'm probably gonna be forced to discard a few more energies but um a lot of the times when you're playing pikaram my mindset goes to you can tandem shock and pray and it was actually five energies not four energies that i discarded so it's pretty um pretty huge there so this is one of those things where I like when I'm playing out when I'm watching my opponent play I try to plan out my next turn while watching them play so we know that my opponent's aiming towards an altered creation and that our goal is to go for a Bolton V that's the only two things that are ever going to happen next in this match our opponent's not going to ultimate ray out of anywhere or anything like that but at this point I'm pretty fed up with the game um this particular game and I'm just like I I don't think I'm going to win but there's no point of conceding either. Um, just because there's so many factors that could happen online. Like, I've, I've been playing the game in misclick. Things like that. So I just hate if I did not play the entire game out. Or just see exactly where the game would go. But obviously, like, if you look at my opponent's turn 2 compared to, like, my turn 1. It's absolutely um, ridiculous. Um, the, the triple energy on the Zacian. But they couldn't get out of the active spot. So I kind of gave me an extra turn. So... 
I'm trying to think exactly. I, like, I think my whole game plan was like, I need to attach an energy here to the Mewtwo. Like, I know that that's something that I need. And then, like, I'm like, whatever. I've already gone through a few energies. We can get some energies back with the Tapu Koko. And we had to discard energies anyways. So I think it's just because the Crobat's prized. From what I can see at the game, I am looking at these games um, kind of back to it. And, like, if you look at this hand, it's like, where where are those switching air balloon cards? It's just one of those things where, like, I'm, I'm just kind of stuck here. Um... Might as well look through my deck one more time. See what's in there. I mean, there's there's the switches. There's the air balloons. I'm just not really getting them. But there's not a lot of energies. So I did find the switch. And I'm just like... I don't even remember like what I did here. Um, I'm like debating on if I should attack into the Orangaroo or not. And I'm just like, okay. I'm already to see exactly what's going on here. My opponent still hasn't used Altered Creation GX. Because um, at this point, there's not going to really be too many energies left in the deck. So I just kind of adjusted the game plan ever so slightly from going Bolt Storm. We already have a few energies in play. It is what it is. Um, that, that, that's kind of like where I'm at. Where like, I have a few energies. And there's the opponent going for the Altered Creek. And at this point, it's I more or less have to pray that my opponent cannot find um, a switching out from this. So I, I have my outs here. I don't, th I don't know if there's even anything worthwhile to grab from the deck. I don't even know if it's worthwhile to play the Crobat down to try to get, like, a Marnie or a Reset Stamp or anything like that. I'm just going to go Tandem Shock and just kind of hope. I don't really need to get a boss's orders, a switch, things like that. And this is really where the, the game can turn around. Tandem Shock is one of those attacks that can just absolutely obliterate a game if your opponent cannot find those outs because just like passing is so huge here so they did instantly find a switch it's one of those things where i'm still just like well i'm not like out of it i mean i'm, I'm probably only a turn turn away at most right because i'm i'm gonna be able to knock out that adp that's gonna put me at uh two prize cards remaining and then after two prize cards remaining I'm going to be so close to just winning this game. I'm one turn away, basically. Because I could always ta uh, tag bolt or use my Jex attack on a Dedenne or a Crobat or anything like that. So that's how your deck can really like stay in this game. If I did not knock out that Orangaroo, and if I went for the Electrify, I would have been out of this game. I would have been turn now I'm just one turn behind. Um, and I mean, it's crazy. It's funny how like games work like this. And I'm just like, okay, I gotta sign up to Dene. The Air Balloon top deck was pretty huge. But I mean, let's be real, I could have top decked through most of my deck because there was Crobat. And at this point, I'm just like, how can I kind of just stop this game? I'm like, I gotta go boss orders, bring something up so I can get the knockouts. Reset stay on my opponents. The Crushing Hammers, as you can see, that's my fourth Tails in a row. Crushing Hammers sometimes is a wasted card, but it doesn't matter. Here I'm gonna go for one, to double check through my deck. You can see there's the Eldegoss to be able to win the game. If my opponent does not find, you can see I'm hovering over the well played because I'm just waiting for my opponent to have the boss. I'm just waiting for him. Usually 99% of the time they have the boss here. They're just going to drop another thing. But they've already dropped their Dedenes, their Crobats. So that's really where I was like, like they just don't necessarily have it. And I'm not entirely sure why they're just like putting the the big charm there and then we have the boss orders for game so there's boss orders i'm just trying to bring up the pokemon and it's tough because you can see the big charm on the other one i just want to bring down the wrong so there's game one going to be and quickly jumping into game two i try to always give my opponent a good luck something sometimes a heart and they're going to choose whether they want to go first or second they're just going to go first which is great for great for this deck it's, it's one of those things where Picaromp always wants to go second, and ADP usually always wants to go first. So, I mean, this start instantly is better than my last start, last game, because I do not have to discard all my energies from the entire board. I do not have to, I even have the Crushing Hammer. There's a lot of really good things going this game. And if this is a game that I remember, 
Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's a game that I made a crucial mistake in. Not to like foreshadow anything. I'm sure you can tell by the length of this video and especially that the games are like two times speed. That's a huge crushing hammer's head, by the way. But I mean, it, there was a crucial mistake that I made here. I don't know if it was due to nerves, due to me being tired. Or just like a lack of thought process. It's one of those things where like you can always kick yourself after a game and hindsight is going to be 2020. So I mean, I'm just looking through here. I'm like, I didn't get anything off the speed lightning energy. I'm forced to go to Den IGX because if I just go Mewtwo, I have nothing to follow it up with. So let's go ahead, pitch his hands. And you can see like, it's not even bad. I kind of have everything that I want. Um, Raichu is almost as good as a Mewtwo in this game. There's not even a point of me using Tapu Koko. I'm just like, do I use Tapu Koko? Should I use anything? Should I try to draw more cards with Crobats? I mean, I probably should have just held the Crobat there. But I think I was just like, yeah, I can get Mewtwo out. Mewtwo's good in this matchup. Whatever. I don't know if I should have ever put down the Pikaram there. But here I am, powering up the Pikaram. I think I should have just powered up the Raichu in the first place. If I would have went Tandem Shock on my opponent's active Pokemon, that would have been huge. Um... So, honestly, I think that I should have held the Crobats. Um, kind of kept my resources to myself. I should have not put down a Pikaram in this matchup. I should have... Like, in, when you're playing against the ADP matchup, you never want to put those things down. But my opponent's start doesn't seem that crazy, right? Like, nothing... Nothing... Nothing's whatever. But they ended up getting in the Metal Saucer, the Water Energy, and kind of martyred me into a hand of nothing. But still, even still, I don't even feel like it's that bad here. Um, I kind of have a decent bit of, like, options with his hands. So, I mean, I think going Speed Lightning is the correct choice. And even, like, if Crushing Hammer there would have been huge to take an energy off the ADP, I'm just like, when you're playing this matchup, it's just, like, take away their energies, stuff like that. Um, here, I, I basically needed the bench space in order to make things happen. Um, just putting another Dedenne GX down because I have nothing that I could absolutely do with this hands. Um... And reasonably, yeah, I don't, the air balloon's fine there because I don't think my opponent played tool scrapper. And even now it's just like, I'm, I need to try to get boss orders cards. I need to try to find other cards in general. And the crushing hammerheads is huge. Like you can see, I went two for three on crushing hammerheads. It's huge. And the full blitz is where the game became really tough. I mean, I think the best Pokemon to ever attach to is the Raichu. Just because the Raichu can start using Tandem Shock. Tandem Shock's a huge part of the strategy against this matchup. And it, it's, it's really one of those things where I'm just like... It's it's even crazy as I'm watching this game and re-watching this game for the first time. Um, since, since I played it. Or maybe the second time. I, I honestly... It's kind of all a blur. It's been, it's been a minute. I'm just like, how did I lose this? It doesn't look bad. I mean, I think putting the Pikaram down is a mistake. I think putting the Crobat down is a mistake. But how how did this game go from otherwise 150 damage on an ADP, them attaching an energy, having to find a metal saucer and an energy switch? Like, how did this game go wrong? Because if they don't end up finding the ultimate ray they've wasted too many resources to make it happen so that's that's the thought process going through my mind and they even go for the primate wisdom and i'm just like you can tell that they just got like the research there off of the primate wisdom either that or they had to put something important away and kind of like maybe their game paused for a second i'm not entirely sure and even at this point i'm just like it's it's still not even bad like the game is in a great spot for me and i'm just like more or less i think i just go for the knockout on the adp to avoid the ultimate ray i'm less like do i use team yell grunt and try to attack into the active and i'm just like do i build up the pikaram to try to knock out two other pokemon but this is really where the biggest mistake happened I should have powered up the Raichu Alolan Raichu. If I did that, I would have had access to my GX attack. And that means I would have been able to knock out the Zacian. Here, I have no way beyond Tandem Shock. Because the, 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 the thing is, Tag Bolt GX is going to do nothing in this case. 
if my opponent just gets a knockout, which they can just naturally get a knockout. They were an energy and a metal saucer away. That was the biggest kicker. Not a, so my, everything else was going splendid for me this game. Absolutely like textbook. Even though I made those like slight mistakes with the Crowbat or Picarom, we could overlook those. It's more or less that I did not come through with the Raichu at all here. Because you probably have to go for their Metal Saucers, things like that. Like, there's so many things that just were going right my way. And that the fact that I attached an energy to the wrong Pokemon at the wrong time. And Tag Ball GX, amazing. But it's it's not going to be doing enough to knock at the station. So even though I have Tandem Shock as an option, it just gives my opponent way too many options. Like, way too many turns. I should have easily gone for... The three prize card, two prize card, um, one prize card method to win this game. But as you can see, I mean, they're, they're just going to get the knockout on this Pokemon. And I, I don't entirely remember how this game ends. I don't, I think I remember playing well against them all while. Um, earlier on in the Players' Cup to North America finals um i actually made a mistake against a mobile that cost me a game and almost cost me a loss in that event so it's one of those things where i was like i think i was pretty hyper focused against the mobile here and i'm just like there's there's no reason for me to do anything else just go marnie 160 they're paralyzed they might have nothing off that marnie and to me i think this is huge i'm like do i want to play crushing hammer here and i know if, i think the commentators actually commented over and it's like should Zack play the reset stamp? Should Zack play the crushing hammer? The reason why I did not play these cards is because it makes more sense to play them next turn after if if I just give them another turn or if they just go intrepid sword, this allows me to win the game. Those cards would allow me to win the turn if that makes sense. Sure, it might have played out all well, but there's no like Dedenne GX. They'd have to get like a crowbat, which means they'd have to get like something else here. Not sure, the, it was really weird, the order of operations, and I mean, in, in two times play, it doesn't even seem like it's that much of a pause, but there's a few pauses between those actions, I was like, ugh. I mean, I, I, I wasn't expecting play to particularly have that turn. That's fine. Jumping to game three, kind of got to kind of got to jump back from my mistakes. It's a matchup that I feel is favored for me, and I just got to like, I just got to appreciate that, that, it, that it's a favored matchup for me. And I mean, starting with Raichu is definitely not bad. Again, we're going second here. Um, so going going second is absolutely amazing. And you can see that there's the Quick Ball for the Boltons. There's the Switch. There's a Lightning Energy. I mean, there's a lot of good things going well for me this game. And that I think that's the thing. It's just like, Picarom has a lot of really good things going for it. Um, especially like, and if there's any other factors that happen in this game. So there's the Bolton. I don't even need to go use the quick ball to grab a bulletin so i was even like a little bit perplexed on like how i wanted to handle this I'm just gonna go quick ball i mean i'm probably gonna pitch my hand anyways and that's my whole thought process i was like oh no where's my raichu and i'm like okay never mind i started with raichu but it's one of those things where like you always gotta like think about your outs so as much as crobat seems like a card that we'd probably use in this matchup um over and over again it's one of those things where the crobats the crobats not particularly the strongest card so there's the mewtwo so that we don't have to worry about playing down anything else like the picarom the same mistake's not going to happen again and there's the crushing hammer you can see crushing hammer heads the first time is absolutely amazing it's beautiful and that's that's a textbook turn on how picarom just makes a dominant board position now, if my opponent's able to kind of get around this, as you can see, there's the energy switch, there's the water energy. I'm just like, whoa, they, they just naturally had that in hands. It's one of those things I'm like, okay, let's go. Whatever. It, it, it happens. I, I'm just, I'm just exciting. I'm just excited at this point because getting off a, just a standard Electrify onto a Mewtwo is everything that I want in this matchup. I mean... It could be anything that I want in any, any single match, but I mean, it's actually just happening in real life at this moment. So, obviously expecting 
kind of an altered creation GX here. But I could follow it up with a tandem shock. I could follow it up with a full blitz. Whatever seems best. And I'm just like, okay, I'll hold on to that speed lightning. Let's go for the Marnie tandem shock play. If there was another crashing hammer, that would have been awesome. You wanna you just wanna throw your opponent through as many rent like kind of hoops as possible. And even at this point, I'm just like, do I try to go for it? There's a tap of Coco. I just want to make sure that there is any outs my opponent plays. Any kind of card against me. Anything like that. But if you can stop your opponent from using Ultimate Ray, you're usually in a pretty good spot. The fact that they put down an Oranguru, huge. The Big Charm actually just doesn't matter here because Full Blitz is just massive in this matchup. And you can see, like... And I was just like... Wait, why <laughs> my opponent's so good at using a Ranguru then research. I don't know if they're putting a card on top of the deck and then getting the research. But um this was just kind of uh a crazy game. So they did not get off an ultimate raid, they did not get off an attack. It's no longer boss boss game. And here crushing hammer just really taking the energy away from the bench Pokemon is huge. Because that just means that my opponent needs one more step in order to make it all happen. I'm like, they have a big hand. Let's go Marty again. Marty again is absolutely amazing. And at this point, I'm just like, okay. Full Blitz gets the knockout. 160 plus 150 is the 310. So the Big Charm is going to matter on the active Pokemon. And now I can start powering up the Raichu, Alolan Raichu. And I'm just like, but wait. Do I go for the tag pulls again? And in my, I'm sure somewhere in the back of my mind at this point, I'm just like, okay, I literally made this mistake last game. I'm definitely going for the Raichu play. Raichu can at least knock out a Zacian. So now my opponent not only needs to find a way out of the active spot, or, well, they have the way out of the active spot with Air Balloon. They need to find a way to move my Pokemon to the bench. So basically getting a Great Catcher or a Boss's Orders, a Metal Saucer, and an Energy, all from a four-card handoff Marnie. And that's kind of like where this is coming from where i think it's huge and the fact is if they aren't able to do so we can get the knockout with bolton here um so that's kind of like i'm just like it's huge being able to use bolton's is a huge 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 consistency um it's a huge damage crutch like i have a pokemon that can hit for one two three four five six seven eight a nine 280 damage so, just waiting to see exactly what my opponent could do here. Just, just absolutely, just like, I'm waiting for that boss. I'm waiting for that great catcher. I'm waiting for something. And I'm just like trying to pre-plan. I'm, I'm like, if they get it, if they don't get it. And, and they're searching for it. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a Zigzagoon. I don't remember there being a Zigzagoon. And you can see I'm still quick just to go with kind of this play. Take the energies off the damage Mewtwo. Get that retreat into the Boltons. And I can knock out with the Boltons. And then I have knock out with the Raichu, Lolan Raichu. If my opponent could put down an ADP... It just doesn't matter. But at this point, I'm, I'm just, I don't think there's much else. I think they're just playing out to their outs at this point. And this game, this game's just absolutely wrapped up. It's an absolutely incredible play here. Just an incredible game um, that I was quite fortunate to get to be put in this position. It's just, uh, I'm just like, what do I do? I think my opponent's just like, uh, I don't think there's anything else we got here. The Boltzons got the knockout on board. Zach got us so there we have it i mean that to me that was one of it it was a kind of incredible game like looking back on it, i was like i could kind of relive through my emotions in that moment where i was like i need to go to cer get to a certain threshold because i really want this travel award um so for those of you who don't know top four of the players cup two gets a travel award and at this point i think i need to win like four games in a row in order to do it so i was like okay one under the belt we got three more to go <laughs> And it's just like looking looking kind of like at what the field exists of i was like there's nothing anything like crazy spectacular if that makes sense it was just a bunch of p 
Picarom decks, ADP decks, everything was super standard. I was waiting for something super spicy. But in our, sta in our standard format, there's nothing that's like crazy spicy. Everyone went fairly conservative here. So I was like, okay, you wanna know what? Got this one under the belt. Let's get ready for the next game. Um, incredible games over there by, by our opponents. I mean, super well played on their behalf. It's just one of those things where learning learning from my mistakes game two allowed me to kind of tackle game three differently and just kind of like moving on the go game states are kind of fluid and it's one of those things where even if you make a mistake cover it up it's one of those things where you can kind of just like move on from your mistake in game and then try to advance don't let it shake you too much and you can put yourself in a better board position in game two game three even in the next round take take your learnings because i mean i mean after this event I feel like I've been able to play Picarom on a different level, much more consistently. I mean, I wasn't always the biggest Picarom player. And a lot of the times, like, you get thrown in situations that allow you to just, like, figure things out a little bit quicker going forward. So, I mean, I hope you I hope you all enjoyed this video. I mean, it's a little bit different than the normal content that we put on this channel. But I wanted to show some strict top-level gameplay. Um, and especially just having all this amazing footage that no one else has access to. I, I'm just super happy to be able to share it with all of you. Um, so... Again, if you like this type of content, hit that subscribe right there, please. We're currently on the road to a thousand subs, and it'd be awesome if we can get there as soon as possible. I mean, if you're watching this in the future, like, how does Zach only have a thousand subs? I'm just mean. I'm glad that I'm at a thousand subs. But either way, it's I, we're on we're on the grinds trying to get that through. And I appreciate everyone who watches, and, uh, and and I appreciate everyone who supports the channel. Thank you so much, and have yourself a wonderful day. Peace out. Really hope that you enjoyed watching that video. I totally enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video, share the video with everyone that you know, and subscribe to the channel as well. Totally appreciate all the support. We got a lot of cool things happening on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Be sure to check out the social links in the description. Thanks and have yourself a great one.